every single guitar player starts out playing badly.
One, two. Okay, um, you could turn um, my mic down a little bit. One, two. Um, 
One, two. Everyone feeling okay this evening? Yes, we're good. I know it might be a little bit hot in here. We're still having the residue of the heat wave, which is good. And so, amen. Welcome out to the Potter's House, Swarso. Why don't we stand to our feet in this place, amen? We're going to give God the glory, amen. Praise God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to sing that song, Forever God is Faithful. Let's clap our hands. Come on, folks. Let's clap. Amen. You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get you sweet. Let's sing. Give thanks to the Lord, that God and King. His love endures forever, for He is. For He is good and He's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. And sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is, forever God is faithful, and forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever and ever. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, and forever God is with us, forever and ever, forever. Sing with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love, his love endures forever for the life, for the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is. And forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, and forever God is with us, forever and ever sing. Forever God is faithful, and forever God is strong, he's with us. Sing forever and ever. Forever, one more time, forever you are. Sing forever, you are faithful. Forever, you are strong. Forever, you are with us. Forever and ever. One more time, forever you are faithful. Sing forever, you are strong. And forever you are with us, forever and ever, sing forever, amen. God, you are good to us in this place, Lord. Yes, God, we trust in you, amen, amen. Hallelujah. One of my favorite songs, amen. I want to encourage you to clap your hands, amen. Sing, say I will worship, sing with all of my heart, and say I will praise you with all of my strength, oh my, and say I will seek you for all of my days. We say I will follow. I'll follow all of your ways, oh, your yes, and say, I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, say, I long to, you alone, you alone are worthy. I will give, say, I will give you all my worship. Bow down, say I will bow down. 
sing and hail you as king. Say I will serve you. I'll give you everything. Every say I will lift up. Sing my eyes to your throne. And say I will trust you. I will trust you alone to you. songs of worship, forgive me, don't look at the mask, amen, I have a spare one, <laughs> praise God, amen, we're singing this song, we've been singing it for the past couple of weeks, I want people to get this song, amen, hallelujah, sing from birth, we were sinners and rebels, born dead on a dangerous path. Follow the ways of the devil. By nature, we're children of wrath. But God, being rich in his mercy, has given us life from above. Sent Jesus to save the unworthy. expression of love so we sing hallelujah sing hallelujah say hallelujah we say Provided atonement through faith in the Lamb we receive. We cannot boast, and we cannot boast for one moment. It's only by grace we believe. We're seated, we're seated in heavenly places. United with Jesus our King, God's kindness in all coming ages will cause us to worship and sing. We sing hallelujah, say hallelujah. time we declare sing hallelujah say hallelujah sing hallelujah 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 god we wait on your presence lord and we thank you lord god Oh God, we worship you, Lord God, and we give you praise in this place. Amen, Father, we thank you, Lord. 
Amen. An old song, amen, that we did not introduce. We haven't sang it in a while. Amen. Let's sing. The lost are saved and find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned. Feel no shame at the sound of your great name. The enemy, the enemy, he has to leave at the sound of your great name, of your great name. Every fear has no place, has no place at the sound, at the sound of your great name. We say, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. The Son of God, the Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. Sing all the world will praise your great name. All the weak say, all the weak find their strength at the sound of your great name. Hungry souls, hungry souls receive grace at the sound of your great name the fatherless the fatherless they find their rest at the sound of your great name the sick are healed the sick are healed and the dead are raised at the sound do you believe it church of your great name say his name Worthy is, worthy is the Lamb that was slain, the Son of God, a man. Sing, you are, and all the world, and all the world will praise your great name. One more time, we sing, Jesus, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Us, the Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. Sing, all oh, the world will praise your great name. Let's give God the praise in this place. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your ever lasting faithfulness lord god and kindness in our hearts lord god we pray oh lord your presence in this place right now help us lord god to hear from you tonight father god lord for there is purpose and plan for us to be here lord god even when we thought we were stumbling through life lord god you god you rescued us and you saved us and father we owe it all to you lord as to why we're here and so father god we're asking lord touch our every heart lord god in this place lord transform our lives and change us god into the people that you've called us to be lord for father god there is a plan greater than what we can see right now and so lord we call on your great name where we're asking father have grace upon each and every person here speak oh lord god into the hearts of your people this evening lord god father we're praying oh lord god all those that came this morning that god they would be touched lord god that we would be able lord god to disciple them father we would see people come in lord god from all over warsaw lord god and that we would see growth in the church lord we will see people rising up lord god we will see the fruitfulness that you've promised us lord god we pray this in the name of jesus all god's people said amen turn around and elbow someone in the elbow amen <laughs> praise god everyone at home hello 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 praise god i'm glad that we could all be here tonight amen one good thing about being up here is that i don't have to wear a mask one bad thing about being up here is that I can't feel the fan. <laughs> and so forgive me if um, 
I look like I've, there's a leak. <laughs> but um, praise God that everyone's here and uh, people at home. Hello, greetings, welcome. Hello, welcome to our live stream. And um, we're in for a good one tonight. And so um, let's believe God for God to speak to us in our way of announcements, everyone. Um, Wednesday, church is as normal, 6.30. Uh, for prayer, 7.30, our evening service will begin. We're talking about relationships, um, dating, love, marriage, puppy love, lust, temptation. All of that, all of that encompasses um, you know, relationships. We're talking about that on Wednesdays. And um, I'm just in prayer at the moment, just believing God for what he's going to say to us next and what thing that he would, um, you know, have me say. Um, because, you know, relationships have the ability to destroy your life or to propel your life into something good, to something godly. The most important relationship that you need is a relationship with God, first and foremost. And from there, our, our relationship should stem off what God helps us with, speaks to us about. And, uh, and amen, we end up in his plan. And so praise God, my life is a testimony of that. So join us on Wednesdays and let's see what God will do. Um, and just a note to the men, um, on Thursday and Friday this week, um, I should have announced this this morning, but nevertheless, here's the announcement. Thursday and Friday this week, um, usually the men would go down to uh, the London church because they have what's called a men's discipleship um, meeting, um, and lots of other UK churches, they gather there every year, um, but because of the restrictions, they can't do that this year, but Erdington, Pastor Louis has told me, Erdington are live streaming it from their church. Thursday morning, uh, I believe 10.30, and then again in the evening at, uh, at 7.30, and they're doing that Thursday and Friday, both days, and so uh, gents, you're listening at home, or you're here, if you can get the time off work, then praise God, if you can make it for all of them, then, and I really push for that, um, I'm booking days off work for that, um, but if you can only make the evenings, then um, let's believe God for Thursday and Friday. Um, are they doing a barbecue on Friday in the daytime? And so maybe that's some incentive to get some annual leave. But anyway, um, let me know if you can come. I can get back to him um, soon. And also Saturday, um, this coming Saturday, we're going to Middlesbrough on an impact team. I looked up where it was, and it is just under three hours away. Um, and so we're meeting. You ready for it? Can we have a drum roll? <laughs> We're meeting at 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. on a Saturday, I know. And praise God, if you're giving up your Saturday to come with us, it's going to be, uh, you know, it really impact teams, really do challenge your faith and really help you to grow. And so um, we, we don't have a minibus as yet, but amen. We are, we are praying for a minibus. Why don't we pray for one? where we can bring a truckload of people to different cities. Um, you know, that would be such an amazing thing to do. Uh, in the meantime, we'll be using our cars and, uh, we'll, you know, church will be paying for the fuel of that to get there and get back. And so um, uh, Middlesbrough Impact Team, uh, this Saturday at 8 o'clock, we're going to go and see Stephen and his wife Holly. Um, we are doing outreach. Um, it's a full day of outreach. And, and so giving out flyers, music on the streets, witnessing and then we're doing a concert in the park at 6 o'clock. Um, and so that will be interesting. That will be real fun to do. Um, we've already had experience of that. And so let's go for it. Amen. Um, also next weekend, um, so not this Sunday coming, but next Sunday, we're having Pastor Louis preach for us. Um, really looking forward to that. Do we have the photo of him up there, Gabs? Um, I don't know whether we've got it on open LP, but Pastor Louis is coming anyway. Um, he's, he's ministering for us. He's really excited to come. He, he's, been, he's been asking me for a date to come. He said, Wes, I, I want to come down. I need to come down. And so um, he's going he's gonna to preach for us, uh, not this Sunday evening, but next Sunday evening. And um, uh, um, also, um, we, do ha we are resuming our music lessons so a lot of people were, were, were learning instruments, the, the drums, the guitar, the piano. Um, um, and so we are resuming that finally again after the lockdown. We had a lot of traction with that. People were coming to learn and 
uh, I was really kind of the only one that was fully able to teach them the instruments. And so <clears throat> people that know how to play the instruments, you know who you are. Uh, please join us on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday. Um, and maybe we can just maybe we might be able to rope in some of the other ministers around the churches and see if they can help us to learn and to and to um, learn our skills on the instruments. And um, amen. Because it's getting lonely up here. Just saying. Um, anyway, that's all we have in our way of announcements. Amen. Let's give God praise that we can give into the offering this evening. Amen. Amen. I encourage you to give into the house of God. The, 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 the buckets aren't coming around, um, but we do have online giving. And so uh, just, just, just note that this is going towards your heavenly home, that you're investing in your heavenly home. And, and uh, also the work of the Lord, the work of the church, what we're doing, um, you know, going out to other cities, investing in there. And I want to tell you, you can't put a price on a soul that when you give, amen, there is a spiritual transaction that happens. People get saved. It's weird. You're not buying people. <laughs> we don't believe in that. But God honors the gift. God honors the offering. And he says, I'm going to return that in many different ways. And so let's be a blessing to uh, our church. Brother Joseph, why don't you bless the gift and give it for us. Raise your voice. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that song. I've got my mind made up, saying I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Say I've got my mind, my man. No, I won't, won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Born, born, born again. Sing born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born. Born again, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Say, I've got my mind. Sing, no, I won't. Because I want, want to see my Jesus someday. Amen. Let's give God the glory. Amen. That song always makes me happy. It's a song I always used to sing when I first came to Jesus. Amen. Before we uh, get into tonight's, um, uh, you know, tonight's ministry, I'm going to do a song for you. I wrote this song a bit earlier. Um, uh, the verses, you'll have heard them before. But the, the point of this song is that the Bible says that, that, that God will take you from what's called the miry clay and set your feet on the rock. And the miry clay is a picture of our old life. When you have miry, not just clay, but miry clay, it means something that is stuck to you and you can't get out. You feel like you can't get out of your old life, your old ways, your old way of thinking, and, and you're stuck going around in circles, almost like quicksand. But God says, when I get a hold of your life, I'm going to take you, clean you off, and put you on solid ground so that you can walk right, <laughs> so that you can live right. And so that's what this song is about. Amen. Sister Gabby, why don't you play the track for us? I hope we like old school garbage. Amen. Hey. I was nothing, nothing. But Jesus made me something, something. Said I was nothing, nothing. But Jesus made me something. Gab, let's turn it up a little bit. Tell me I was nothing, nothing. But Jesus made me something. 
Yo, okay, rewind, let's take it right back. 18 years old and I'm sidetracked raw. The Lord spoke to me, stop fronting G, you don't really live like that. Think you're a bad man, then die a penalty for the guilty. Go on, try that. Ain't nobody love like me, can die for the fiend. And everybody who shakes my back, recognize that nobody talked that. Recognize that Jesus did that. Are you really on top when you're on your own? And your man, they've ain't got your back. Hush, the Lord's calling you. Need to get things straight, no ruler. Let him come put your life in order. Don't front anymore, let him move your yeah, eye. Cause I was nothing, nothing But Jesus made me something, something Said I was nothing, nothing But Jesus made me something He took me from the miry clay Jesus Christ, he changed my ways He took me from the miry clay But Jesus Christ, he changed my ways took me from the miry clay he took me from the miry clay jesus christ he changed my ways yeah yeah he changed my yo everybody puts on the face of a hard man i remember that used to be me try living it wild like tarzan you know that's not for you really you just need security you just need a peace of mind but you're not putting your hope in Christ. It won't be in a rave at night. Living for Jesus, I'm more than a fighter. I don't need no boxing gloves. I don't need no knife or snuffs. More time, my Bible's enough. Living for Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. So give me a mountain, I'll climb it. Give me size for boots, I'm hiking. My faith in God, I'll be flying. No rebel, the world's just hyping. They say they don't need God, they're lying. Drop bombs for peace like ISIS. Society's in a crisis. Everything's so unstable. Like they took the legs off a table. Seems like everyone's living a fable cause we need Jesus. Cause I was nothing, nothing But Jesus made me something, something Tell you I was nothing, nothing But Jesus made me Listen, listen He took me from the miry clay But Jesus Christ, he changed my ways Took me from the miry clay Jesus Christ, he changed my ways. I was nothing, nothing. Jesus made me something, something. It's gonna get stuck in your head. Tell you I was nothing, nothing. But Jesus made me something. Mary Clay, sing. He took me from the Mary Clay. He took me from the Mary Clay. But Jesus Christ, he changed my ways. Jesus Christ, he changed my ways. He took me from the miry clay. Took me from the miry clay. Jesus Christ, he changed my ways. Yes, he changed my ways. Track done, amen. Let's give God the glory. God is good, amen. Before we begin tonight, um, and by the way, I found that instrumental earlier. I just thought, you know what? Let me just do something to it. Sounds so good. Garage. I'm a garage fan. And so anyway, before uh, I show you this tonight, I want to give a little introduction to what you're going to see. Because we believe that when you get saved, you're born again. You get right with God. You have lived how many years of your life a certain way for yourself you're number one, and all of a sudden, you get kicked off your own throne, and God gets put there, and now it's almost like, okay, what on earth do I do? How do I pray? How do I hear your voice, God? Where do I go from here? Um, in a, a preview of next Sunday morning sermon, that's what it's going to be about, but we, we get into this place where it's like, okay, what next? And God begins to put your life on a new course. You're, you're free from your past, from the curses of the flesh, from the, temptation, the temptations that come and things that you weren't able to overcome before. You're now given the ability to overcome. God gives you this new way of thinking, a new way of doing things because... He wants to use your life for something that you have never been, never seen before. He wants to use your life to a capacity you've never experienced before. And a big part of that is serving other people. Is that it? <laughs> serving people? Galatians 5, 13 to 14 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. 
Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. One thing about serving God is that, you know, people can think, oh, you know, you're just a servant of God. What does that mean? But you begin to see supernatural things happen in your life. Miracles of provision. Things where you, where you fall short, God begins to make up for. A life of living for God, I want to tell you, it, you haven't seen anything yet. It's going to blow your mind. You're about to see and hear about lives that, God, that have been given to God. God has used them for incredible things. Pastors and pastor's wives and people in the church, you get to see backstage and how God has touched their lives and many other lives through them. I want to tell you, God wants to use your life for something great. And so this uh, particular production is called Where is the God of Miracles? It was done uh, by Tucson Church, um, Tucson in there in America, Arizona, and uh, they're one of our leadership churches, and, and you know, they've put together a very good production, and so um, just have a listen. Please allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Allow God to inspire you of what he could use you for, and you'll begin, amen, to see You'll just begin to be inspired, amen. Allow God to speak to you. Um, why don't we um, uh, play that, Gabby, and I'm going to switch off the lights for us. My lifestyle involved uh, drugs and alcohol for about eight years. Started uh, dabbling when I was an early teenager. Coming to my fourth year of college, I played football, gotten injured, had my ankle reconstructed fractured my collarbone at a different time. And so the invincibility that I thought I had when I was a young man was being challenged. My dad had left my mom. You know, having your mom weep on your shoulder when you're still a young man was a challenge on top. And I didn't even know how to begin to deal with that. Jennifer and I got married when I was just turning 20 years old. My real focus at that time, it was playing football. But at that point, I was really caught by the devil in thinking that if you're a professional football player and you say, yeah, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus, that's all that's required. You don't have to really live a holy life, which was uh, to my demise. After uh, a night of partying and that kind of thing, I'm married, came to a place where I, I actually wanted to end my life. Graduating from high school, not having a real direction for life, I tried college, wasn't prepared for it. Grew up in a very religious home. However, lots of fear, sickness, no blessing to speak of. I started hanging out with wrong people and I was at the other side of the law, started breaking the law. Cuando cumplí 14 años, mi papá, como regalo de cumpleaños, me lleva a un lugar en donde Conocemos aquí en México como table dance, que es donde se le paga dinero a las mujeres por desnudarse mientras bailan. En ese momento mi papá como regalo le pagó a una mujer dinero para que tuviera yo mi primer encuentro sexual con ella. Pues al principio no sabía que estaba mal, al principio decía, bueno, esto es lo correcto, porque eso era lo que te decían los adultos. Mira, llevaba una vida de desorden. No, yo no tenía esa tranquilidad, esa paz y... Yo todo lo, se lo delegaba a mi esposa, yo nomás cumplía con llegar con un gasto, dinero y dejarle la responsabilidad a mis hijos. Pero yo no quería que ella, como mi mamá, mi abuela y todos teníamos esa de que a los 14, 15 años salíamos embarazadas, pero conoció a que ahora es su esposo y él era una persona muy rebelde. Cuando lo conocí a él, yo este, empecé a rebelarme contra mis padres, quería estar todo el tiempo con él. Mentía a mis padres para poder quedarme a dormir con él. Y fue cuando salí embarazada de mi hijo, el mayor que tiene siete años. 
where is the God of miracles? Judges 6 begins with people in a desperate situation. The Midianites have financially exploited the children of Israel for seven years. Where is the God of miracles? was not a statement of great faith on Gideon's part. He's uh, struggling to reconcile that fact with the reality that they're actually dealing with. And what inspired me is we have to begin. The starting point of everything is that God is a God of miracles. And if that's true, that means that, you know what? I can be used of God. That means this project that seems impossible can become a reality. It means people who are sick can be healed. And if you don't have that, then you have nothing. Our salvation is a miracle. When people say, well, uh, I've never seen a miracle. Well, you're looking at one. The church is a miracle. Over the years, when I've had situations where people said, oh, Pastor, you've done a wonderful work, I say, listen, you don't understand. This is a work of God. The call to go into all the world and preach the gospel. If you look at that scripture, Jesus then gave the promise right after that, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age, that those disciples, just like you and I today, have to have the confidence that God's grace, His supernatural power, is available to us today. That doesn't mean I understand all of God's workings. There are a lot of things that are a mystery, but the one thing that doesn't change is that is who He is. That if God did that, at this point, he hasn't changed. I am the Lord, I change not. So he has to still be the God of miracles. If we talk about idolatry, at that point in my life, I was the idol. Everything was for me. I remember being in my teenage years, having a thought, football's first. You can see if you watched an old video of me, up until I got saved, whenever I made a play, you know, I let the whole world know, you know, hands in the air, you know, even some of these waving towards myself things. It just happened that one day my mom asked me to go to church with her. So I went with her to church. And I think that was probably the first selfless thing I'd done in, I don't even know, years. I went to the altar and when I asked Jesus to be my savior, I got filled with the Holy Ghost on the spot. My experience was supernatural. It was instantaneous. It was this, I felt like I was, I was high and, I, and it didn't go away. And for the next three hours of time, I was like, what on earth? It's happening. And so I said, okay, God, I know you're real, so now what? And that's where he began to speak to me. And so there were some revelations along the way, but I remember God speaking to me clearly in, in song service during a, a church service that I was at early in my salvation. And the, the song service leader said, lift your hands to Jesus. And I said to myself, I don't wanna lift my hands. And God like almost audibly felt like, but no one else heard it on the spot said, when's the last time did doing what you wanted to do bring anything good into your life. How many times have you almost died making your decisions? You know, when I really made a commitment to Jesus, I was in bed after being drunk the night before. God said, go ahead and take your life. I tried to get up and I couldn't. He said, you're really serious? You want to give up your life? And I said, yes. And we were, I was talking with God. You know, this is kind of my, my experience. I don't, I don't know how to say it any other way. It happened. Uh, and uh, he said, well, I'll take your life then. And so I, it was just like, okay, okay, you've got it, I'm done. That really changed my direction. Football was gone. 
And I was always looking for a church where they really wanted to do something for God. And when I went to Prescott, I was captured by the fact that this was the real deal. People are praying, they're wanting to do something for God. I was an only child. I was pretty spoiled. I wasn't around young children at all. I didn't babysit. I wasn't a girl who dreamed about getting married or having babies or any of that stuff. My goal was to be popular. By the time I got into college, I read the book called The Population Bomb. It talked about the overpopulation in the world. Educated people needed to do their part and not have families so there would be enough food for everyone. I never wanted any kids at all. Every pregnancy, I freaked out thinking my life is over. I'm never going to have free time anymore. But. God totally changed my heart and gave me a big family. And reading a book, getting the proof that some of the greatest people who ever lived in life were late born children and large families back in the day. Strong Christian men who changed the world. When I read through those books and I just felt like God, you know, whatever you want to do with my life, I surrender it to you. When Mexico was first presented to me, uh, I have to be honest, I fought it for an entire year. And one of the, my struggles was the financial aspect, you know, I'm, to be honest, comfortable. A member of the staff, Tucson, I could have stayed there my entire life. So I would always think, wait a minute, Mexico, they pay in pesos, you know, I, I don't know if I want to do that. So for an entire year, I, I basically wrestled with God. But I remember one particular night where I said, Lord, my life has been bought with a price. My life is not my own. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I'm not spiritualizing this, but I really sense that still small voice that God said, I will provide for you. Five years later, I'm so, so glad we did it because we've entered into God's plan. And the safest place to be is centered in God's will. So God has revealed himself as the God of miracles, but then he says, oh, by the way, Gideon, there's a little problem. And that problem's not far away. It's very close at hand. In fact, it's in your own father's house, which was the Baal, the idol, that his father had erected. And God was saying, if I'm going to show myself strong in your life, Gideon, you're going to have to tear down these idols. And you're gonna to have to start in your own life and you're gonna to have to start in your own home. And all of us have had times where the Lord has dealt with us about this issue, this attitude, this behavior and saying, you know what? This is keeping you from becoming the man or the woman that I want you to be and I've called you to be. Antes de Cristo, me dedicaba siempre a hacer fraudes robo de vehículos, mentir a la gente. Mi trabajo se presta para eso. Me pedían, me encargaban los vehículos, necesito tal, tal carro, tal marca, tal año. Yo lo conseguía. ¿Por qué lo hacías? Porque necesitaba para, según yo, para mi familia, para que mi familia nunca les falte nada. Cuando en sí les faltaba todo, todo les faltaba. 7, 23 años me entero que mis padres consumen cocaína, que a mí me da una depresión muy fuerte. Empecé a adentrarme en otro tipo de adicciones como el alcoholismo. Es la típica mamá que cocina, que lava, que te anima a estudiar. Nunca te imaginas que algún día la vas a ver consumiendo droga. Entonces eso me deprimió mucho. Y ahí fue donde mi abuela materna me dijo, ya intentaste grupos de psiquiatras, médicos, ya intentaste todo lo que el mundo te está ofreciendo. Lo único que no has intentado es darle una oportunidad a Cristo. Yo le digo a la enfermedad. En la enfermedad, mis intestinos se habían paralizado. 
tenía calentura, eran unas fiebres de 40 grados, 38, 40 grados. Eh, cuando yo voy a los doctores, al hospital, pero fue aumentando el dolor. El dolor aumentaba, aumentaba. Y pérdida de peso, 10 kilos por semana más o menos. Yo tenía miedo, no sabíamos lo que él tenía, cómo se quejaba, no dormía, no, no comía, me, me preocupaba y me preocupaba en el, también en el sentido de mis hijos. Este, en ocasiones él llegaba a decirme que, que ya se iba a morir, se despedía de nosotros, nos decía que fuéramos fuertes, que siguiéramos adelante sin él y sí fue mucho más el miedo, el miedo de perderlo a él y quedarme sola sin mis hijos. Yo me resistí mucho en querer darle una oportunidad a Cristo. La mamá de mis hijos, hoy mi esposa, fue la que me dijo, yo ya no te aguanto, ya no te tolero. Yo, siguiéndola a ella para ver dónde se iba a meter. Y realmente no fue un golpe, sino realmente fue una, una caricia, podría yo decir, porque la primera vez que yo escuché de Cristo, en donde decían, venir a mí todos los que estén cargados y trabajados y yo los haré descansar. Y era lo que yo pedía, un descanso. Yo dije, si eres real, si realmente tú ofreces un descanso, ayúdame a descansar. Y ahí fue donde yo tuve una confrontación. Sentí una paz desde que empezaron a lavar, hicieron el llamado. La verdad, no sé en qué momento me dijeron, pasen enfrente. Y fui la primera que empecé a pedir perdón por todo lo que, lo que yo había hecho, el daño que le hice a él lo que le hice a mis padres, sentí como, como si hubiera nacido de nuevo en ese momento. Valoré a mis padres, valoré a mi esposo, a mis hijos. Sentí que fue una criatura nueva en ese momento. Ya en la desesperación, decidimos venir y Dios, en su misericordia, lo hizo, lo hizo, me salvó. Y en ese mismo instante yo recuerdo ¿no? que todo el dolor, toda la calentura como llegué, desapareció en ese instante. Cuando recibí a Cristo empezaron a orar por mí, llegó la paz, llegó la transformación. En ese instante puedo prometerlo, que sentí como mis intestinos, o sea, como que los movieron, los activaron. Todo ese día desapareció. Y de ahí mi vida empezó a cambiar. Rob was asked to become the senior pastor of the lighthouse. And I was pretty stressed out because at that point I had four children and the pastor's wife before me had been an administrator. She was a Bible school graduate. She did teaching. She was just hardcore Christian businesswoman in the church. And that was not me at all. And God spoke to my heart and said, you just need to love your husband, love your children, and attend church services. You know, I'm not to have to compare or walk in the footsteps of the previous pastor's wife. And that was a huge encouragement to me. In my life, has there been a time where I didn't really feel like I'm the person to take the gospel to the world or to be a pastor, or even a disciple? I answer that question by saying, I still feel that way. My goal was to raise my kids to know Jesus and to be part of a family, and that would be the best thing that we could ever do in our lives. Just have a family that loved God and raise my kids. My, my kids would be my disciples. One of our locations we lived in for 17 years, tons of memories, and we were going through all kinds of financial struggles. It came to a crisis where Rob goes, we've got to sell this house, and we moved to a new house, and I felt nothing for the new house. And this is a house where Rob said, oh boy, we can have 10 people live with us. And I'm like, no, 
I don't want to live with 10 people from the church and our own kids, but we couldn't find anywhere else to live. The house was 10,000 square feet. It was a state sale in Santa Monica. And so what we did was we just moved a whole lot of people in. We had about 26 people and that included us. That just was like, we didn't think, you know, anything of it. We just thought, you know, we got to survive. It was about $12,000 a month just to break even. It was difficult. It was very, very difficult financially. And I'm doing two jobs and uh, three jobs being a pastor of the church. I didn't believe God was in this. All I could see was work, so many people. Again, here's the only child living with masses of people using my stuff. I learned that submission isn't submission unless it's really hard. Because if, you, if it's not hard, you're not really submitting, you're in agreement. There is like constant runs to the market <laughs> for food. It's like $600 later. I also remember it being almost like a party house. There were so many people in and out of our house, pastors coming into our home, learning about where they came from. In Gideon, there is a principle of discipleship that's foundational, and that is that God is far more concerned in what we can become than who we are. Gideon, hiding in the wine press, you would not have uh, thought that here's a man who's going to deliver Israel from the Midianites. To me, that's one of the most encouraging truths. Discipleship is God uh, calling us and then promising to uh, make up the deficiencies in our lives. Out of my weakness, God's strength can be made manifest. I don't know if I have ever in my mind or my wildest thought think I'll be a pastor. The person that helped me to see that calling was Pastor Gobskin. One of the great blessings of being part of our fellowship came supernaturally, at least to me. The first time I went to the Bible conference in Tucson, they were sending out Alvin Smith to Sierra Leone. I put in an offering a, a good amount of money from our church, and all of a sudden, Pastor uh, Warner and, and Alvin Smith are calling me up and asking me to go to Sierra Leone. I picked him up from the airport and he asked me, first of all, when are you going to get married? I said, well, I don't know. And the old Johnny, he preached on marriage. And later, the, I remember he came for a conference and he called all the young men that want to preach the gospel you must come to the altar, I'm going to pray for you. And he prayed and laid hands on us. I cannot explain it physically, naturally, what transpired in my, in my, in my life. Jirebo korobo shiaramanda, jirebo koshiaraba kiorobo sai. My wife and I got married and I was launched out to the west part of Freetown, a neighborhood called Wilberforce. And the church was actually located in a military barracks. We saw this old, dilapidated building. Whilst we were doing the surveying, I saw this young man by the name of Marvin Kooma. So I started a Bible study in Marvin's house. And I remember we scheduled a crusade. I preached and uh, my first service, I have 163 people that came to church. 60 gave their life to Jesus. And that's how the church started. I asked them, can we start prayer meeting on a Tuesday? They said, yes. Can we start midweek on a Wednesday? Yeah. Can we start Bible study on a Friday? Yes. Can we start outreach on a Saturday? No wasting time. And that's how the church kicked off up till today. With the help of Pastor Marvin. One of the 
difficulties in sharing your parents in discipleship living. There are certain things I think that I just, I had to bury inside because I, I just felt like I couldn't talk about it with them. You weren't sure if you're gonna have enough time <laughs> to get through it all. And almost like a loneliness, you know, or feeling alone forced me to go to God. I was living in New York at the time and my older brother Chris had recently gotten saved in California and had started attending the Lighthouse Church. And so my brother had said to me, oh, I think there's this girl out here for you. And I told him he was crazy. Well, I came out to visit and it ends up happening where I bring a bag in through the front door, the Red Sea parts and right there on the stairs in front of me is Bethany Scribner. And uh, I, I look at her and I'm like, oh wow, that's not what I was expecting. We're a part of a very small group of people when you consider the whole world as a, a place where my daughters or my sons can find wives. That's a big thing, with the, even within our fellowship. We want to have people that believe in God. Well, two of my children are married to people that lived in our house. You feel like you're in a fishbowl growing up as a pastor's kid, then being a pastor's wife. Like, you have to do everything right. Some of that, I think, is self-inflicted. Some of that, though, is definitely from other people. They have an expectation of you, and you have an expectation of yourself. And so you can crumble under the weight of expectations. I think it hit a climax, actually, when we had discipleship living, and we were pioneering, and I had three children. I remember just walking up the stairs one day with my like laundry basket, for the millionth time and being like, I don't want to live anymore. God, like, can I, I just, I, I wasn't like, I wanted to commit suicide, but it was more like, I'm just done. I don't have anything left to give. It was honestly though, at that moment that I remember just like going to sit down at the piano and play a worship song to God and crying through it. Like, <sighs> it was a mess sobbing. And God just holding me and speaking to me and saying like, it's, you're okay, like it's enough. You're doing enough. You don't have to please everybody. Those moments as difficult as they were, my relationship with God like took off in those moments, you know, as difficult as they were. I like wouldn't go back because I was a weak Christian without it just not able to deal with some of the things that I was gonna to have to deal with in pastoring, marital problems and abuse, and how do you relate and how do you deal with these things if you don't have those lows where God has to sustain you, where nobody else is the, the answer. When God came to Gideon and said, you have too many people for me to give you the victory, there was something very, very profound. God was making a point, and he said, if I do that, then Israel's going to say, my own strength has brought victory. There's something deeply embedded in human nature where if we have the opportunity, we're going to convince ourselves that somehow by my might, by my ability, by my good looks, by my education, et cetera, et cetera, I've done this. God said, I cannot be the God of miracles if you think like that. And so part of the process of winnowing down that army was bringing them to a place where they would realize that if there was victory over their enemies, then there's only one person who can get the glory, and that is God. Yo sabía el problema que ellos tenían en su adicción. Yo sabía que estaban pasando por algo mal. Y yo le decía, si a mí me salvó, también lo puedo hacer con ustedes. Y no me cansaba de ir a buscarlos que si voy a ir con tal de que ya no me estés molestando. Y llegando a la iglesia, yo iba tomada, mal, desvelada. Y empezó a decir de los borrachos, de las fiestas. 
Y yo estaba tan enojada que dije, Fernando, me las va a pagar porque ya les vino a decir mi vida. Es cuando dijo, abran su Biblia en Mateo. Y exactamente en la Biblia estaba lo que el pastor estaba hablando. Y dije, wow, Dios mío, no fue él. En ese momento yo sentí mucho calor, hermano, muchísimo calor. Yo levanté mi mano. Yo dije, Señor, yo aquí voy a venir contigo. Porque tú eres el único que supo mi vida. En ese momento yo ya no estaba tomada. Me levanté y yo era otra persona. Mi yerno me abrazó, me besó y me dijo, suegra, perdóneme. Y fue en el momento, sentí la necesidad de pedirle perdón a toda la gente que yo ofendí. A toda la gente que yo la trataba mal, empecé a pedir perdón a todos. En ese momento que yo hice la oración cuando recibí a Jesucristo, ya no sentí ese peso. Yo llevé incluso dolores de, de huesos, de espalda y todo eso. Y fue un cambio así también que yo lo vi sustancial de que ay, había algo, una paz. Y en la iglesia, ahí fue cuando yo supe pedir perdón y dije, Dios mío, voy a ver a mi mamá, mi madre. Ella me había abandonado, me había dejado con mi abuelita y era todo lo contrario. Mi abuelita se la quitó. Cuando la fui a ver, me dijo, ¿qué pasó? Que si me iba a morir, que si tenía cáncer. Me dijo, no madre, perdóname. 54 años sin darte un beso, sin abrazarte. Yo quiero que me perdones. Y hace muchos años me dio una carta. Me decía ella todo y me decía que yo la perdonara, que no era lo que me habían dicho. Y esa carta nunca la leí y la tengo. Y ahora que estoy en la iglesia, la leo y digo, Dios mío, qué grande eres. Y desde ese día para acá, yo voy a ver a mi mamá. La abrazo, la beso, vamos, venimos. Y fueron 54 años sin saber. Y fue Dios el que me unió con ella. March 9, five years ago, we were flying over the city. We had 13 duffel bags with us coming to Mexico City to live here and start our ministry. I'm looking out the window at this massive city. I mean, millions upon millions of people. And perhaps my wife perceived my thoughts. And she says, Jesus. And I said, what? Don't worry, she says, you don't have to win them all. Five years later, the kingdom of God is built heart by heart, soul by soul. And to see some of the people in those five years that are saved, that are living for God, families restored, my God, that is the, the most rewarding thing. I started a public charter school that used the Lighthouse Church as its facility, and that ultimately helped out the church radically financially. But in order for that to happen, I go into the city planning, I've already got people enrolled, and they say, oh, you're not even a church. What? You don't have a business license. You're not a church. You don't have an occupancy permit. You're not even supposed to be there. What are you talking about? So if you want to be a school, first you're going to have to apply to be a church. We're going to have to bring everything in the building up to code. It's going to be at least $50,000 in sprinkler systems. It's going to be, and they start listing all of this stuff. I literally get the wind knocked out of me, though no one punched me. I can barely speak. I get out and I just start praying. I probably started crying too, I can't remember. This happens so many times. I leave the city planning office like choked up in tears because I'm just getting beat up by the devil. I go back to the church and I'm like, Lord, you got to help me find something. And so we have these old filing cabinets. I'm just rifling through, just file after file, file after file, file after file. And I pull out this little carbon copy of a yellow slip. And it's from May of 2002. And there's a signature of the fire marshal on the bottom and you can barely read. It says, permission to occupy. And it's signed. Now I'm crying. 
<laughs> and so I go in the next day with this little piece of paper. I'm like, oh, would this help? You know? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, you're all set. That was it. I can't even tell you how many times that that happened. It was just a miracle, one after another. He moves in mysterious ways. You don't experience the miracle until you step out. And unfortunately, most people won't experience the miracle because they won't step out. I believe in God more so because of money than almost anything else. Because God has just done incredible miracles in my life when it comes to finances. Uh, we had at one time three different uh, couples that were out. One in Guatemala, one in Sierra Leone, and one in France. And all of these churches still exist. And they all ended up coming back in this about a three month period. It was a, a incredible financial drain. But something happened. A couple that had been in our church, they just fell in love with international missions. A lawyer in Germany called me up and said, these people have given their estate to you. And so I went down to the bank to find out how much it was. Uh, the actual amount that came to our church was about $175,000, exactly the amount of money that we needed to bring these people home. Just an outright miracle. So their names are Ottenwright, so we call it an Ottenwright miracle. That house that we bought over on Georgina was just a flat out miracle. Best investment I've ever had. I mean, when we went to sell the house, it was in a depressed market and it went up another 25%. God just did a miracle. We were able to pay off debts at the church, give to ministries, buy our new house. And Rob talks about in his testimony how all the money he'd ever tithed to God was repaid back to him in one day. We're just a little group of people and we can't do these things that we're doing all over the world. God gives us the victory. And I do think that God does it in such a way that you know it wasn't you. <laughs> do not despise the day of small beginnings, small things. You know, let's be honest, when we're pioneering a church, the beginnings aren't all that enthralling, but uh, from those small beginnings, uh, God has done something so miraculous. Make them God into vessels of honor. Make them God into vessels of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray your presence be made manifest this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I remember preaching in the early days about vision and that we could take the world, but I never conceived we would see what God has done today. Pastors and their wives that are excelling, Christ-like, uh, these churches that are centers of evangelism and they are planning churches. And the great thing is that it hasn't ended. It is just beginning and that what God has in the future is going to blow our minds it's going to be beyond what we thought, and he's going to get all the glory. See, and switch the house lights on. Amen. If we could have every head bowed and every eye closed very quickly, and uh, we're going we're gonna to close off here. But um, let's say a few words. Amen. You know, the, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 9, 
it says, I has not seen, nor ear, nor have entered the, into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I want to tell you right now, God has prepared something for you in this life. God has prepared a path for you to walk in in this life. Many people miss out on what God is doing because like the woman said, submission is hard. But this today, I really hope has inspired you because God wants to do a miracle in your life. God wants to give you a life full of them. But many times what stops us from getting to God is our sin. What stops us from getting to God is the things that we want to do. We're on our own throne. We are the king or queen of our lives. And like the man said, when has doing things your way and it ever brought anything good into your life? I know we might have had, a, have, have had our fair share of blessing without God. But I want to tell you the end result is something that you don't want. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish in hell, but that should, but all should come to everlasting life. Maybe you're here and you've been living in sin. You've been living without God. You've been doing things your own way. But by this message and by just how God has a pathway for you to walk down, you're saying, you know what? I want to turn from my own path and I want to turn to God. So maybe you're in sin and you want forgiveness of your sin. Just raise your hand up in the air that I can see it. I'll lead you through prayer. Maybe you're at home just a, as a sign to yourself. Lift your hand. You want to lift your hand and get right with God in this place. Just raise it up. You want to turn from your own way. Turn to God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say a prayer of repentance. Amen. If you want to say that with me. Amen. God wants to do a work in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you died on the cross for me that I can live for you. Father, that I can be a Christian, that I can go to heaven when I die. And I know that you don't want me to walk in my own way, but you want me to walk down the path that you've laid for me. I pray that you change my heart, change who I am, set me free from sin. I receive your forgiveness. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you said that, you're at home. Please text the word saved to the, uh, uh, and your name to the number in the description in the video. And the church will be in touch. Maybe you're here and you said that, amen. God bless you. But maybe you're Christian here and you're thinking, you know, what now? What next? What do I do? Where are my steps going to lead? The first thing is first, you just say, I'm going to put God first. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to sit and listen. I'm going to attend the things that are going on because I know that's where the instruction is going to come. And so this is now in your part. You know, whether you've been inspired, maybe there's pastors in here. Maybe there's pastors' wives in here, future leaders of churches, future ministers of the gospel. You know, God has inspired you. Maybe he has. Amen. These altars are open. You turn in your seat or you pray where you are. This is your time to speak with God. Amen. Let's pray this, this, uh, this evening. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we're asking, Father, that you would inspire each and every person, Lord. Father God. Oh, Lord God, we're praying, oh, Lord God. Father God, that you would help us, Lord God to know what it is that you have for us, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord, to walk in your way. Father God, that we would not lead our own lives, Lord God, that we would not live selfishly. God, that we would live for you, Lord. God, that we would give ourselves to the will of God and be changed, oh Lord God, by what you want to do. Father, we believe in for miracles in our lives, for those that are stuck in financial difficulty, God, those that are stuck in relationship difficulty, those that are stuck in resentment, Lord God, or bitterness. Father, we pray that you free them today in the name of Jesus. 
Father, God, I'm praying that people would not be shut off to you, but God, you would help them to walk in your way in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, we pray, oh, Lord, that you move in their lives, oh, Lord God. Yes, oh, God, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Father, I'm praying those that aren't filled with the Holy Ghost, that you fill them, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, help us, Lord God. God, to be on fire for you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we trust in you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we worship you in Jesus' name. song of worship in this place to close us off but if you keep keep praying if you're praying if you're still praying about the things you, God wants you to do maybe you struggle with submission to God struggling with oh God I, I want to make the decision I want to serve you but it's hard you know that's that's this is the time to speak about that with God amen you won't be disappointed things God is going to use those things as testimonies against the devil but also to help people that God's going to bring into your life and, and you know you're going to be surprised at how God comes through for you how many know it's not a miracle until all your options are done <laughs> and the only the only person left is God and he wants to do that for you amen so uh, we're going to we're going to close off in a word of prayer, but I really want to inspire everyone. Keep on living for God. Keep on living for him because you have no idea where he's going to take you. And uh, I didn't imagine that I would be here, but just listening to the stories, I've heard these things so many times. I've experienced some of the things that they're talking about. And so God is ready to move in your life. Amen. You just got to submit your steps. And so let's close off in a word of prayer. Amen. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God of miracles. You show yourself, Lord God, in many different ways in our lives. 
And God, whether it is in our minds, in our hearts, in, in, in physical terms, Lord God, whatever the miracle that we need, Lord, we are praying. I'm praying, Lord God, your hand over each and every person in his life, Lord, that, God, we would see you as the God of miracles. You're going to move for us, and we believe that you're going to change our lives, Lord God, as we submit to you. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said together. Amen. 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 Be blessed, everyone. Be blessed. Amen. Every single guitar player starts out playing badly. And to make it worse, you always feel like you should be better than you are. You feel guilty that you didn't practice or that you just played those songs you kind of know and didn't pick up anything new. Say this, you'll never know we are love without Jesus, and that's basic, and that's basic. Jesus got that guy for you, love. Give up in life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love, kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that guy for you, love. Give up in life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The world needs your love. We need your love. We want your love. We need your love, the world needs your love. We need your love, we want your love, we want your love, we need your love. I was looking for that Latin love, that romantic love. I was looking for that Vegas love, the love in the club with the lights, but the media had me stuck. Thank you. 
got that rare kind of love, kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that die for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The more we need you, love. We need you, love. We want your love. We need you, love. The more we need you, love. We need you, love. We want your love. We want your love. We need you, love. Jesus, love. Send me a fire now. Wanna live my life to show it inspire now. Crucified in our plights, it's real love. When I say this, you'll never know real love without Jesus. And that's basic, and that's basic. Jesus got that guy for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. Kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that guy for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The world needs you, love. We need you, love. We want your love. We need your love. The world needs your love. We need your love. We want your love. We want your love. We need your love. I was looking for that Latin love, that romantic love. I was looking for that Vegas love. The love in the club with the lights, but the media had me stuck. Stop by Cupid. Hey, 
got that rare kind of love, kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that die for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The world Dad, needs your love. I say this, you'll never know real love without Jesus, and that's basic, and that's basic. Jesus got that die for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love, kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that die for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The world needs your love. We need your love. We want your love. We need your love, the world needs your love. Jesus got that rare kind of love, kind of love that is real and real. Jesus got that die for you, love. Give up his life, kind of love. Jesus got that rare kind of love. The world needs your love. Spider, you heal your pain. 
Crucified in our lights, it's real love. Thank you. 